Ooh, okay, uh, on a problem like this, we have a binomial times a binomial, and we need to multiply them. So one thing you need to remember when multiplying um, polynomials is every term needs to be multiplied by every term. Now, when you have binomials multiplied by each other, one of the most common um, ways to remember how to do that is to use FOIL. And for this problem, it kind of looks a little complicated, so I actually would prefer actually using FOIL just to keep things organized. Now, when we're talking about FOIL, what it terms is a binomial, right? What you're going to have is you can kind of categorize the terms based on where they are inside of the problem. So the first one is F, which represents our first. So you're going to take the first two terms of each of these binomials and we're going to multiply them. Okay, so just remember when you're multiplying radicals, as long as they have the same index, meaning they're both like square roots, then you just multiply the radicands, whatever is under your radical. So in this case, we have 3 times 7, which is going to equal a square root of 21. All right, the next one we're going to work on is going to be the outer. So the outer terms, if you look at this as like a whole expression, the outer are going to be like this first and this last term out here, right? They're at the outer ends of this um, expression. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply these. Okay, so again, they both are the square roots. That's good. This one is a negative, right? So make sure you're keeping track of that. And again, we're just going to multiply these here straight across. I have x cubed, which could definitely go ahead and um, simplify that. Here, you could break that up. We'll, we'll go ahead and work on that in just a second. First of all, let's just go ahead and multiply this. Now, the reason why I can break that up is what I can do is I can actually take, I can take the square root of an x squared. So what I can do here is break it up like this. Okay, so all you want to do, remember to simplify the square root, is you can always take the square root of things that are squared, right? Now, there's no squared numbers that evenly divide into 6, that's why that's going to be remain the same. And, um, but x squared, I can take the square root of that, which is just going to leave me with an x in this case. Now, we could also go ahead and think about this as like the absolute value of that, since it's going to be an odd power. So you could just definitely go and include the absolute value in that case. Um, whenever you're taking the square root of an even value and you're left with an odd power, you're just going to include that that is a positive version. Um, then let's go and take a look at the inner. So the inner are going to be on the inside two terms. So that's going to be inner and here. And again, doing the same thing here, we're multiplying 2x times the 7. That's going to remain under the square root. That's just going to give me a 14x. Okay, and then last but not least, guys, is going to be the last term. So that is going to be this term as well as this term. So now we're going to go ahead and multiply these last two terms. Okay, so now in this case, what we're going to simply do is we're going to have a negative, right? 2 times 2 is going to be a 4, and then x times x cubed, remember, add the powers, that's going to mean x to the 4th. Now in this case, remember I talked about taking the square root of numbers, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite this as terms squared, so therefore we can see how we can simplify this. Okay, so now we know we can actually, by applying the rules of radicals, we can simplify this, the square root of 2 squared, is just going to equal a 2, right? We still have the negative there, so that's going to be preserved. The square root of x squared is going to be an x, and the square root of x squared is going to be an x. So therefore, that's going to give us a final term of a negative 2x squared. Okay, so the thing, again, I like about this method is that now we have this term, this term, this term, and this term. And what we want to be able to see is, are any of these exactly the same? Do they all have the same index, which they all do? But do they also, and again, you could still do the same thing. Well, this one's squared, so you don't need the absolute value in that case, um, since it's already pretty presumed positive. But you could put the absolute value around the, around the 2 in that case. Well, it's already a negative in that case, so you're going to be 2 squared, so it's already negative. Um, but what you can now do is go ahead and take a look at this and say, all right, there's nothing else I can combine. So therefore, I can now read my, my final answer here as a negative 2 x squared plus square root. 14x minus absolute value of x, square root of 6x, plus a square root of 21.